those are then three components and undifferentiated cells. And this is how the whole process starts. This is an oocyte, and you can see it's, it's covered in sperm cells. It's not yet fertilized. Um, fertilization is a very complex process, actually, and it's in the form of the presentation of the cell. But uh, this is basically how it starts. And then this shows uh, the, the sequence of events that occur on the upper uh, on the upper left side, you have uh, a single egg that has been fertilized. It's fertilized. Uh, I don't think you can call it zygote at that point. Uh, but then it goes, it undergoes cell division, sort of within this. You can see that uh, sort of green there, the zone of the, the egg is sort of confined in there. And so it splits into two, and then two splits into four, and then four splits into eight. This is actually eight, but there's one on the top and one on the bottom, you can't see in the lower left hand side. Then the eighth splits into 16. And then about that point, it's, it's called a morula, somewhere between 12 and I think 38 cells. It's called a morula. And it just keeps on getting more densely packed with cells until what happens is it sort of like inverts on itself and it splits itself into different layers. And at that point, it's called a blastocyst. And it's more like it's like a hollow ball sort of pulls apart from the inside. And the blastocyst is there on the lower, lower right hand side. And um, here are the cells um, that are sort of on the outside of the blastocyst. This cavity is called the blastocyst single. And this is the inner cell right there. So those are the cells that are actually going to be extracted. And then uh, here's the uh, another picture of the blastocyst. You see the cavity in the inner cell mass. And some of this is like sort of like an eggshell, you can nail together. And the blastocyst is uh, the stage of development at which it actually gets in the This is the blastocyst is necessary for it to actually attach to the wall of the uterus and plant and start forming. Yeah. Are we talking like a day or two after the fertilization? Yeah. 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 How do you know a good cell from a bad cell you said? You know that? It's, well, that is, I, I've talked with, I've done a little bit of, of um, mouse stem cell work. And so I haven't actually worked with the cells. What, what typically happens is you get somebody who spends their entire day just working with these cells, and it's very hard for them to describe what a good bunch of cells looks like. It's almost an art form. They almost have to get the sense of, you know, what they're looking for, and, and they, they are able to tell you just by looking at these cells look good, these cells don't look good. It's, it's sort of not beyond science, but it's very, very complicated. And we typically just hire a single person to do that work because it's very intensive and it takes a lot of training. Because that gives you the Yeah, because, I mean, look at it. This is, these are what cells, I mean, you can see cartoons of cells in books. They do not look like that. It's not that nice. This, this is what cells do look like. You're looking at them under you know, a, a differential microscope, and they're like these little fuzzy blobs. It's very hard to actually see all the structures. Um, so it's, it's not as nice as the cartoons you see in books you might see later in this presentation. Uh, and so you really have to get a little sense of it. Yeah? Do you know the percentage of good against bad cells? I mean, for for the for every fertilization, I don't think I don't think they look at thousands. I think it's probably on the order of maybe like hundred or seven. So like maybe one out of hundred is, is chosen. Yeah. Um, in the human body, when um, the fertilization occurs, does it have to be before implant? Is it a blastocyst? Right before implant, it has to be a blastocyst implant. If it does not implant, then it's just going to be flushed away. And then, is it possible that there's more than one that's fertilized yes. that may not make it to the down the fallopian tubes or whatever? It yeah. doesn't become a blastocyst, is that right? Um, well, if, if something, if, if anything incorrect, there's a, there's a whole sequence of events. Everything has to go just perfectly in order for it to you know, divide properly and plant properly. If anything of those things goes wrong, it just gets flushed away. And that's actually, the, the vast majority of fertilization events 
do end up as, as basically miscarriages, but they don't even make that point. So, right, and you wouldn't know, right, you wouldn't know that you miscarried, just be a normal menstruation. Um, but yeah, yeah so there's a whole, and you know, there's, there's the possibility that, of course, you know, the fraternal twins, you know, those are basically two different embryos that have been they both been planted. Monocytic twins, identical twins are a little bit different. They're what happens if the cell, before it starts dividing into memorial, actually splits off and separates. So that they're genetic, they're identical. So this is the cartoon, like I was saying, cartoon of what happens. And this looks a lot better than those uh, micrographs. Um, on the upper right hand side, you've got memorial, which is just a bunch of little tight package cells in the bone of them. And then it sort of inverts, and you get that um, the plasticist. Um, the cell on the outer ring, and the inner cell mass, and the inner cell mass is actually what we take out and use the culture. And this is what the uh, culture of embryonic stem cells actually looks like. Um, this mass right there in the middle, that is a clone of some embryonic stem cells, and they're sort of sitting on uh, what are called feeder cells. Those are, I think those are um, actually mouse embryonic stem cells that have been uh, differentiated from feeder cells. And the human cells are sort of sitting there as like a ball. Right on top. And you need to feed yourselves there to keep them from dividing too much and also provide them nutrients, the such nutrients that they need. Um, it's, it's a very tricky um, endeavor to keep stem cells growing in culture because you have to keep them growing and you have to keep them undifferentiated. And it's, it's very tricky to do, and there's a lot of research that needs to be done to, to really refine that still. Um, so, ultimately, what happens is you get these cells in a dish and then they can potentially differentiate. We have seen examples of these differentiating into neurons, skin cells, muscle cells, fat cells, and uh, metabolic cells, like red blood cells. And you know, all throughout the human body is you know, very relevant. Um, so basically, all the organs uh, we can address certain problems and issues. But those are embryonic stem cells. What about adult stem cells? Well, adult stem cells are similar in that they're undifferentiated. Again, all stem cells are undifferentiated, they self-renew, and they can permanently differentiate into some other type of cell. And so adult stem cells are just undifferentiated cells that are located throughout the body. Um, they're, like I said, in your skin, your liver, your intestine, all over the place, and they enable tissue repair, organ repair. And um, the problem is that they're, the origins of these cells are a little bit more obscure than embryonic stem cells. It's very easy for us to take a blastocyst, look at it under a microscope, see it divide, take out the cells, and culture them. It's not so easy to find adult stem cells because there's very, very few of them. They don't look like anything special, but they're undifferentiated. So they're very tricky to find. And when you do find them, there's like one cell amongst a million. So it's very, very difficult to actually um, get these cells out. We know that they're there. But it's, act, it's, it's difficult to get them out and, and culture them. The only ones uh, that we've had much experience with are hematopoietic stem cells. And that's because, quite frankly, it's easy to get. You just open up your blood. You know, they're, they're constantly circulating through your blood supply. And uh, most of the research in those stem cells has been with hematopoietic stem cells because of that fact. Because we've had access to them for so long, and it's easy to get them. They're in your marrow, and you know them. Um, but all stem cells do have uh, varying degrees of potency. I'll get to potency a little bit later. They're not as potent as embryonic stem cells, but uh, there have been examples of adult stem cells differentiating, transdifferentiating into different cell lineages. So, for example, there are examples of hematopoietic stem cells that are in your bone marrow differentiating into neurons, or neural cells, basically. So there is, there is some plasticity there. We're just not sure exactly how much, depends on the source. And the one thing that is certain is that it's not as much as uh,